What's going on, everybody? Josh Engelman for AwesomeO.com, and I am back with my NBA DFS contenders on Wednesday, February 10th. On FanDuel, by the way. I missed the, some, For some reason, I messed up the order of that intro. I do this every day. You think it'd be the same. Anyway, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman, so you can get updates to the sim results. I am on live before lock tonight, so expect those sim results somewhere in the neighborhood of 6 p.m. Eastern time. And finally, let me know in the comments section who are your favorite options for tonight's slate. We're rounding out the bottom of my top 10 with Lou Dort, Patrick Williams, Darius Baisley, Luka Doncic, and Colin Sexton. I feel like I could just play the video from two days ago again, given where some of this value is. Who will be in the top five, the favorites for today's slate? It's time to find out. First up, number five, power forward eligibility for Isaiah Roby. He's 5K, projected for 28. The goal's 39. He's in the optimal lineup 21% of the time. We're doing this thing again with the Thunder. Only eight active guys. No SGA, no Maladon, no George Hill, no Mike Muscala. I'm probably missing even more people. 30 minutes, 0.94 fantasy points per minute, 19% usage, 13.6 boards, two and a half assists, you know, two stocks, pace neutral spot against the Lakers. When push comes to shove, these guys are not priced to where they should be given the amount of minutes they're going to have to play. We got to fill 240 somehow for the Thunder. They only have eight active guys, big minutes across the board, which means big value across the board, which means Isaiah Roby at power forward at 5K, kind of a no-brainer. Speaking of guys at 5K at different positions, number four, Kevin Herter, shooting guard eligibility, 5K, projected for just short of 28 fantasy points. He's in the optimal lineup 21% of the time. He's been playing monster minutes. We know we're still without Bogdan Bogdanovich. We're still without, uh, we're going to be without Rondo as well. And then finally, there's a third guy that I can't think of off the top of my head, and I don't know why that is. Who's been out for the Hawks for a while? I'm going to start this Kevin Herter one over again if I can't think of it. It is, it is. Oh, DeAndre Hunter. I got there. Yes. Oh, see, what a great pull. I was just talking about PGA. Did a PGA golf video with Ben Raza. Pushed the NBA stuff out of my head. So no Hunter, no Bogdanovich, no Rondo. Kevin Herter's playing 36 minutes a game. He's a 0.8 fantasy point per minute guy. I'm actually projecting him a little bit worse than his normal rates. 0.77 for the game. 16% usage, 13 and a half points, four boards, four assists, stock and a half, neutral pay spot against Dallas. Ultimately, this is just another play on price. Value is kind of weird now. There's no true all the way pay down options that I like am going crazy for. There are some, obviously, but a lot of the value is coming in this like high fours, low fives range, guys that should be four or $500 more expensive than they are. So this is another spot where I'm betting on minutes. Herder is out there a ton. If the shot is falling, this will look great. Uh, should be a, you're not, you're not worried at all really about Dallas's defense. So I think it's a decent spot. You'd like for more pace, but ultimately I think it's fine. 5k for Kevin Herder looking pretty good at shooting guard. Now, number three, I'm going to Chris Boucher. He's 6K, power forward eligibility. Minutes have been all over the place right now, but I have him projected for 33 fantasy points in 26 minutes. He's in the optimal lineup 22% of the time. He's a 1.22 fantasy point per minute guy. That bumps up to 1.27 for this game. 15 points and eight boards, two blocks in 26 minutes, which is kind of crazy. The reason I like Boucher so much, and to a lesser, like, I would like a little bit more from Toronto, but their prices are already high. Boucher doesn't fit that bill, but they do get a date with the Washington Wizards. They gain three additional possessions over their averages. That stands as a really nice spot for me. Anytime you can get Toronto playing at a little bit faster of a pace, I think it's good. And I think a faster pace is just going to fit Chris Boucher more than it's going to fit someone like Aaron Baines. The up and down nature, just not really his bag. And... You're not really worried about center matchups against Washington, although they do have two big bodies now in Robin Lopez and Alex Len. But either way, 6K for Boucher, you get to play him at the power forward, uh, power forward spot. That's a nice value at that price tag. Works in pay-up builds, works in balance builds. Hits his goal 12% of the time, but 22% in the optimal feels pretty good. I think there's even a range of additional minutes. I wouldn't be surprised to see him play more than 26. There's some downside in minutes as well, but I want to try to attack that pace up spot, which puts Boucher at the number three spot. Number two, I'm going Malcolm Brogdon. Point guard eligibility, 7,200. Projected for 39. Goals, 47. Optimal lineup, 24% of the time. 36 minutes. 1.08 fantasy point per minute. 21 and a half points, six and a half assists, almost five rebounds. You get a steal. 
And much like Boucher, he's in a great pace up spot. Indiana taking on Brooklyn, no Kevin Durant, so not great defense. Three additional possessions per game over their averages. Three possessions is huge for someone like Brogdon. We're talking about an extra point and a half just by having a different matchup and a faster pace. That's really big. A point and a half. The difference between being 38.8 fantasy points and 37.3, oddly enough, is really big. Those margins are huge. If I tweak him just a little bit, I mean, he could easily be the number one contender if it wasn't for Oklahoma City. But for now, against Brooklyn, Malcolm Brogdon, a matchup against either Kyrie Irving or James Harden in the backcourt, this looks fantastic for Brogdon. I like paying up here, and it's not even really paying up. 7200 not a crazy price tag. Would you really be surprised for Malcolm Brogdon to have 47 fantasy points against the Nets? I know I wouldn't. Now, before we get to number one, one last reminder, like button, subscribe to the channel, notification bell, follow me on Twitter at Josh Engman. Go watch The Process Show, my new show, 6.30 a.m. every single morning. It's archived on YouTube. It's me going through each team, breaking down the rotations, looking at minutes, looking at uh, rates, usage, rebounding, assists, all that good stuff. Went for 90 minutes this morning going through every single team and... I thought I wasn't on live before lock tonight, but I am. So tune into that one, 6 p.m. Eastern time tonight. Number one with a bullet today, Hamadou Diallo, point guard eligibility, 6,500, projected for 38. The goal's 45. He's in the optimal lineup 30% of the time, well north of everybody else on this slate. And he's going to play a ton, 35 minutes, 0.96 fantasy points per minute normally. We're talking about 1.08 here, 20 points, seven boards, four assists, a steal and a half, neutral pace spot against the Lakers. But as I mentioned before, the Thunder only have eight guys. Diallo has to play a ton. There's really no way around it barring injury or aggressive foul trouble. These minutes are about as firm as they get. Wouldn't even shock me if it went north here. He's going to be incredibly popular, as will most of the Oklahoma City Thunder. So be aware of that in your GPP builds. But in a cash game... Hamadou Diallo is the first guy you put in your lineup. You cannot avoid him. He looks too good. The value is too much to pass up. Alrighty, folks, that will do it. Those are my NBA DFS contenders on FanDuel for Wednesday, February 10th. Uh, that's normally going to be it for me, but Strategy Show, 10 o'clock in the morning with Laffy. Go watch that one. Watch the archived version because these are going to be out after that show is over. And then live before lock again tonight. I'll be back tomorrow with Contenders. I'll be back tomorrow with The Process Show. Good luck tonight, everybody. I'll see you again in the morning.